G'day, folks. It is your coach here. Welcome back to another episode of Talking Series. Uh, we are talking about another Cities of Sigmar army, one that I'm very excited about because I don't believe in it. Not that it doesn't exist. I just don't believe that it's good. <laughs> and uh, my guest here, Jonathan Torrell Black, has challenged me profusely over a number of months saying that this army is good. So this is very much probably more of a debate than it's going to be uh, what you've seen in the past. But we are talking all things Greywater Fastness. Uh, it is part of the Cities of Sigmar book. And uh, I'm really excited to see and maybe be convinced that it's not it's better than Tempest Eye. So my theory here is, and I'm not going to be a dick about it, but my theory is is that Tempest Eye is better. Uh, Jonathan's going to prove me wrong. But first, before we go, uh, we get started. Um, hey, go on, mate. What's what's going on? Uh, do you want to introduce us? Introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, sure. So um, I work in Parliament House at the moment. We're doing the the phone network for the 5G, so that's kind of fun. Out, outside of work, I do Boys Brigades, a volunteer organization. We, um, you know, help boys to learn skills and teach them about God and stuff. And Like Math Hammer, like you're teaching them about rolling more sixes, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Roll more sixes, um, the, the, the stats on a 2D6 is seven, like, you, like mm. make sure you don't fail your charge. <laughs> But no, um, other than that, um, I play Warhammer where I can and read the books, paint models, roll sixes. <laughs> you're, you're, you're the average Joe Warhammer player, um, yeah. which has been actually really excited because I've been watching your journey. Um, you've been in the Australian community for a while now, and um, I was watching your journey finally on Tabletop Simulator. So one of the reasons mm. we're doing this show is um, Jonathan's been in my ear for months now telling me how great, great grey water fastness is, and I'm like, yeah, rubbish, go away. You know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not convinced. But he's actually attended a couple of Tabletop Simulator games where we've seen the absolute most busted ceremony fun list the most busted um zench list we've seen some crazy stuff happening on tabletop simulator and you've done really well so mm -hmm. my eyes and my ears are open and i'm really interested to see if you can convince me but before we get into to gray water and talk about the strengths and the weakness and some of the lists that you've built um how did you first get into age of sigma uh so i started way back in just the tail end of eighth edition for old fantasy where I had a rune lord, a couple of uh, ten man units of dwarves, and a gyro bomber. Actually, I got him over here. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Oh, well, this is unplanned. By the way, Jonathan, I think when I very first met Jonathan, he was mm. dressed as a dwarf. Uh, yes. I'm pretty sure you were dressed as a dwarf at an event. So, uh, Sydney Slow, I was playing my dwarves. You, you are OG mm. dispossessed. So, uh, mm. So he's no so, bandwagoner, uh, and he knows all the <laughs> tricks of the ruin, runes. Uh, so show, show us the model. So this is my gyro bomber, which I converted to be more of a like a plane sort of thing. Oh, oh that's awful. That's better. You know, like you know, yeah, but, nice. uh, God, I can't. People, people on the properly. podcast can't see this, but just imagine this yeah, truly yeah. amazing gyro bomber, um, <laughs> little flying device of doom. But um, so it was it was basically the gyro bomber and a couple of guys, and the rune lord was two hundred and fifty points because you had to have a thousand points, and the only way I could fit a thousand points, he was two fifty. <laughs> he had all the toys, all the runes, everything. But um, so well blew up, Age of Sigma happened, and my little fledging dwarf force went from twenty guys and a couple of fun things to well over 80 models it exploded it just exponentially increased and now my door force is well over 100 models and growing more <laughs> you're, you're a big fan of the dwarves i'm i'm, I'm mm. look i'm a human player i'm all about that you know getting some love from mm. those dwarves love those rune fangs love those mm. machinery that you taught us uh so mm. it's good to be allying again uh once again in the eyes of sigma mm. but i mean as well as the dwarves, I've also had a look at the Wanderers pre um, pre cities, and that they were cool and they had some fun tricks. But then I also got into Stormcast and a little bit into slaves. I'm toying with slaves at the moment. I'm not too sure how I'm going to take them, to be honest. But at the moment, it's full steam ahead for Greywater. 
you know, you're definitely a convert to city. So what drew you to cities? Was it the fact that you had dispossessed models already? Or was there something uh, in this book that really captured your imagination? I know for me, converting and kit bashing and exploring the model realms mm. uh, has really been huge, especially in partnership with the Soulbound RPG. But what brought you particularly to, to rebase those dispossessed, put them in cities and then expand upon them? Well, initially... <clears throat> Sorry. Initially, <clears throat> oh, jeez. Chest is a bit silly. Um, <laughs> dying. So, init- yeah, yeah, slowly dying. You know, just, it's awful. <laughs> I'll be reforced as a storm cast. It's fine. <laughs> um, so, initially, my dwarves, I had them and then I rebased everything for the dispossessed when they didn't have a battle tone. Like, there was nothing, it was just the compendium. And that's what I took to Sydney Slaughter, and that was fun. And then eventually GW went, you guys have got your battle times, you're all being silly. Here, have an actual book, have cities. And I so I looked at cities and was tentatively interested, because, you know, like every new thing, you're not going to get too crazy about it. You want to test the waters. No, so, no that, that's not me. I jumped full. I, I just jumped completely <laughs> in. Uh, well, I, anyone, I know who, anyone who knows, knows me right now with Gargans, I've jumped completely right in. Don't even have a battle tome. Don't even have any models to buy. But I'm 100% <laughs> committed on Gargans. But you're dipping I mean, your toes into cities uh, and you're liking it. Oh, well, back, back. Oh, this is a few years ago now. I was dipping my toes in. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I could mix my armies. I can actually do dwarves and elves properly for once. Because back, oh, geez, a while ago, I think it was the first CanCon, they allowed us to bring two different lists. So I had my dispossessed list and my wanderers list, and I brought two different armies for CanCon number one, and that was a bit crazy. But um, so cities allowed me to go. Okay, calm it down a little. Take them all in the one book rather than bringing two different armies, and that was really cool for me. And so I looked at cities and I started with Living City as John Rocco from your Discord. He liked his living cities. Mine was a little bit um, silly and themey rather than competitive, <laughs> and I got my ass handed to me for it. <laughs> but um, honestly, I think cities over time just grew on me more and more. I, I keep finding myself coming back to cities. I've got my Dracoline Stormcast Eternal Army. That is my, I don't want to think about this. I just want to run at you, army, and see what happens. <laughs> but um, Cities of Sigma for me is my very much, okay, Jono, stop being stupid. Let's think about what you're actually going to do. Let's think about your synergies. Let's think about what's the best way to win this. How do I outthink my opponent? How do I, rather than going balls to the wall, go, okay, step it back a minute. Actually think about what you're doing. Yeah, that's great. We, and I know we've been in previous, um, yeah, we've, we've previously played at events and you've had Stormcast Eternals as well. So, um, mm. and, and you've got to, and you've certainly got to think a lot about synergies. I know when we talked about mm. Grey Water, um, there's certainly a lean into a particular build and a particular mm. keyword that you want to tap into. We won't ruin Christmas just yet. Um, <laughs> but um, the Cities of Sigma certainly does make you think about synergies because there are so many mm. different ball scrolls in the book. So, again, 100%. it's going to be great to explore your list to see where you're getting synergies from not just from cities of sigma but from stormcast from um you know all your ally pools um yeah. as well so it's it's pretty crazy so let's get into it i want to talk a little mm-hmm. bit about the book um let's yep, talk about sure. some of these lists and before mm-hmm. we get into one of your lists i'm going to bring up the rules but i'd love you to explain to me a little yep, bit sure. about like why gray water what are the strengths of gray water compared hmm. to maybe you know hello heart tempest eye yeah, yeah, yeah. um you know all all of the manville guard you name yeah, it for sure. certain name here um what does gray water bring to the table hmm. um right so well gray water um oh hang on we're doing battle traits first oh we can talk about well it's just oh, high, yeah. high level stuff right and then and then yeah, we can yeah, talk yeah. a little bit about the battle traits yeah yeah for sure all right so gray water as an army can go i feel personally this is just me it could be any number of ways for a number of people but for me there is three main ways you want to do gray water there is the artillery heavy focused where you bring the gray water battalion and you max out on the artillery and that thing and you just blow away a thing because it allows you to shoot twice with your artillery in the first turn 
And that may not seem like much, but when you're hitting on twos, you're re-rolling to hit, you're wounding on threes, and you've got very nice ran and some really fun amounts of damage, it just hurts really bad for your opponent. It's a bad day if they let you get those shots off. So it might be worth explaining here that um, Greywater, the city itself, if you haven't looked at mm. Greywater just yet, Greywater is the artillery machine type build. So mm. you know, if you've listened to episodes like this in the past, you know, Hallow Heart is certainly, you know, all about magic. Tempest dies all about movement. Um, mm. You know, you've got your living city, which is a bit more around like sideboarding and, and a different version of movement. Yeah. Um, you can kind of go through, you know, the various different builds, but Greywater is certainly around the artillery companies in Gairan mm. and tapping into those those that black black powder goodness yeah uh, as well as the artillery build there's also a more in infantry focused side of things where because the gray water command ability is very heavily focused on your iron drakes and your hand gunners now i'm a little biased i love my dwarves so i use my iron drakes but you can use hand gunners and they're very nasty and very effective because it allows you to have plus one to your hit rolls on your on those in units, which on a unit that's already hitting you on threes, they're not hitting you on twos. Mm. And with certain other synergies we'll talk about later, you can get them re-rolling, you can get them reeling to wound, and it just gets all kinds of crazy. So I might just go over a little, uh, really quickly some of the different benefits. If you haven't watched this episode in the past, team, um, we've certainly covered this over and over again for Cities of Sigma. So maybe I'll just get Jonathan's high-level overview. So mm. first things first, we're taking the uh, the grey water fart fastness fartness, grey water fastness um, <laughs> as a ah. to our Cities of Sigma and you are grey water fastness. Mm. There's a couple of things you're going to get. The first thing you're going to get is this thing called Amplified Sorcery. So essentially your uh, endless spells that you cast are going to be better. And if you're looking yeah. at the War Scroll and it does say Empowered by the Realms, there are a whole bunch of different things, whether it's going to be mm. uh, you can reroll the damage on Geminids, whether you can uh, extend the range of your Umbral Spell Portal, whether it's doing D6 instead of, instead of D3 Emerald Life Swarm heals. You know, there's a whole bunch of different benefits you get from Endless Spells through cities. What does that mean to Greywater? Are you tapping into endless spells? Is there anyone that kind of comes to mind? Or is this a rule that you're not really taking advantage of in your lists? Um, with my lists, as we'll see later on, I like running the bridge. And I'll run into why that is later. But because I use the bridge, it gets the benefits of the amplified sorceries. And it means instead of just the measly like 12 inches or whatever the normal range is, I don't remember, sorry. But um, it gets the full 24, no matter what realm I'm playing in. So I can teleport my friends of varying shapes and sizes, human, dwarf, elf, etc. up further up the board and kind of mitigates what some would see as a traditional weakness of artillery where you have no maneuverability. Yeah, and, you know, Burning Head's another example where you mm. might be able to re-roll ones to hit. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of cool ones. Phoenix Guard, you know, you can bring back up to D6, yeah. just making that complete anvil really tough to take down. But yeah. um, I, I imagine in, in, in Grey Water list, you're probably not taking as many endless spells or as many wizards, let's as say, let's say a Hallow Heart. So it's yeah. nice, Dep but probably not game breaking uh, for you. Well, it depends for Grey Water because the way I run Grey Water, I like to run a sorceress and I like to run a couple of elves who she pokes in the head going, I don't like you, Fred. Stab. Yeah, stabby, and stabby. Her, <laughs> sorry, sorry, her please don't stabby, stabby. <laughs> sorry, Jimmy. I don't like you either. Dead. <laughs> but, and, and, um, and, and you get plus two to the cast, by the way. We're not yeah, stabbing yeah. for the sake of it. But uh, the sorceress does get a benefit, so that's where mm. the stabbing comes in. It, so you are, you are running some wizards. Mm. I, I run a wizard. You, you could get away with not running the wizard. You could get away with not running the, the bridge. It just depends on how you want to play the list, really. Yep. Uh, the second rule you're going to get is this honored retinue. So basically, mm. um, if your general is within, so if your general has uh, six or less wounds, uh, you're able to pick a unit of five to 20 models and uh, you're going to be able to pass off wounds or mortal wounds mm. to your honored retinue. Yeah. Um, so basically, in my grey water list, I go, cool, who's a unit I don't mind losing, but also 
is around all my friends anyway, so I may as well make use of them and give my gut, my general a bit of a shield if I need it. So on the retinue, for those that don't know at home, allows you, as long as your general's within three of that unit, to roll a dice, and on a four plus, that wound or mortal wound goes from your general to that unit. And so for me, it's my long beards because the long beards are already giving me the real ones to wound for dispossessed units, as we'll discuss why it's good for me in a moment. But um, basically allows the the long beards to have more utility, even more than they already have, because the long beards have a crazy amount of utility already. It's just giving that extra bit of usefulness. But it doesn't have to be long beards. You could use iron breakers. You could use phoenix guard. You could use whatever floats your boat. But um, in fact, phoenix guard is probably one of the better ones because as well as passing off that wound. Then the Phoenix Guard go, oh, no, we took a wound. Four plus. We ignore. I, I think what's really cool as well for Greywater, again, correct me if I'm wrong, Jono, mm. um, in some of the other builds, let's say, uh, I know I know Tempest Eye uh, is a prime example in a lot mm. of my Tempest Eye lists, Hallow Heart. Um, often my general doesn't have uh, five wounds or less or six wounds or less. Yeah. Often it's the Dreadlord on Black Dragon. If I'm yeah. a Hammer Hall, you know, with the Battalion or even Tempest Eye mm. with the Battalion, it's a free guild general on Griffin. So I'm not getting to take advantage of that. Mm. But for you, things like the Lord Ordinator, things yeah. like uh, a Rune Lord, there's a whole mm. bunch of these five, six wound, you know, anointed yeah. on foots um, are really great generals in a grey water. Uh, yeah. And you already have that big screening unit that you want to kind of defend your war machine. So this mm. is a rule that um, I find you're going to tap into. And as you just yep. mentioned, you know, ha have a unit of Phoenix Guard. And then there's a four plus um after save there as well so mm. um so the so the the new the new special rule in the in the general's handbook uh still allows you to take advantage of that so you can still mm. do the four up then pass it on and then do any additional save yeah for sure a couple of other rules you're going to get from cities of sigma but again specific to gray water i'd mm. love to see your um your appeal Yep. First one is you've got your wise your wise counsel. So you're going mm -hmm. to be able to pick somebody, your little homie, uh, and <laughs> if they're within four within range, uh, within three three inches of them on a four plus, you generate an extra command point. Is yeah. Grey Water generally uh, a command point hungry army? Yes, I would say so because you've got the Salvo Fire, which is a fantastic ability, as I said before. But to use it, you need command points, and so there are. Greywater has some artifacts which allow you to generate those command points, which is really nice. But getting that extra command point gives you that little bit of extra spice, gives you that little bit of extra help, which you need in a Greywater army. Now, you can get around some command abilities, not needing to use them in some builds of Greywater, which is nice. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. But um, having that extra command point to be able to go, oh no, my Iron Drakes have got shot to hell and back. Quick, spend a gun point to keep them from running away because Iron Drakes, you don't want them running, you want them shooting. So, so you're having going to be using command points for inspiring presence, you're going to be using your command yeah. points for maybe re rolling ones to hit or re rolling, rolling ones armor save, mm. as well as some shoot, some additional um, uh, command points for the, the, you know, the additional shooting. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it sounds like you guys need a lot of command points. Uh, so this will be an absolute welcomed addition. Oh, for sure. And depending on who your general is and what you're doing, I generally like to run, say, my sorceress as the adjutant because she's teleporting up anyway cause to give me better positions for the bridge. Hmm. And so her being nearby is a given, so you may as well stick it on her and have her nearby the rune lord going, hey, I'm evil, but I give advice. Here, have come our points. <laughs> And what's great as well is um, you're also going to be able to tap into the look at serve rule as well mm. when it comes to your honored retinue. So you're going to be mm. minus one to hit uh, if it's a regular shooting attack, and then yeah. you can pass on wounds and mortal wounds, um, which is pretty pretty sweet, especially For with sure. those squishy squishy heroes. Mm -hmm. yeah, Anything else you would say about the general city's allegiance um, for Greywater, or do you want to get into the Greywater rules? For just one. Oh. The last bit I would go into would be the storm keeps because as cities of Sigma, as uh, Grey Water in general, some of the Stormcast heroes are really nice for when you're running artillery because things like Lord Ordinator gives plus one to hit for all order war machines, not just Stormcast, but order, which means you can stick them in a 
gray water list and he's making those volley guns he's making those rocket blasters hit on way more than they would normally and then you can take a hurricanum and you can go cool now i'm hitting you on twos of everything re-rolling ones to hit and freeze to win yada yada and it's really helpful but also it just means you can get those like cheeky little afer wings and go oh here's some afer wings i'll stick them in front of my artillery so that it distracts you for a turn and lets my artillery potentially run away or shoot you dead i find gray water generally is a very high high drop list um mm. obviously the, the battalion can come in but it can kind of reduce mm. it that you're probably Does sitting it... around eight to twelve drops maybe even more so uh, with the storm yeah. keeps, i like the fact that you can bring in two three maybe even four stormcast mm. units and they've obviously just gained a whole bunch of benefits by yeah. getting points reductions in general's handbook 2020 that they have yeah i mean It'll, oh, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. <laughs> um, it definitely allows you to bring in those little utility heroes, but also allows you to bring in things that Greywater and cities just don't have, like the big combat heroes to go, I am big combat badass, fear me, while your artillery goes, you focus on him, we're going to shoot you while he, you focus on him. Yeah, it could be like the, what you're that could be the Star Drake, right? Mm. Um, I've, I've really fallen in love with things like Aether Wings. I was running them before mm. the points adjustment. So at 50 points, I thought they were really cool, right? They could just be oh, yeah. cheap objective grabbers. Um, mm. They're fast. They can run up, just steal objectives. And if someone kills three birds with six wounds, I'm like, eh, I scored a couple of objective points, mm. it, you know, and, and then I can respond appropriately. So yeah, sure. um, not only do you have your buff characters like your your Xeros, your your Venatar, you've got your mm. uh, your Ordinator, you know, there's whole whole bunch of buff characters. Then yeah. you've also got the troops, which can be pretty handy as well. For sure. Uh, I've actually just started running prosecutors, um, very OG Stormcast because they yeah. fly. They've got three d six charge. Um, they have a nice little shooting attack that gets better um, when you're mm. further away. So again, they're cheap objective stealer so yeah, again sure. stormcast uh, a nice little boost and um i know you've got a couple of cheeky ones in your list oh for sure yeah i do oh they're naughty boys <laughs> so let's talk gray water let's talk about mm. the specific you know i think gen generally high level we understand what what city of sigma brings to mm. our armies but then when we go a little bit further down we go to gray water so specifically mm. by by swearing allegiance to gray water you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff the mm. first thing's first, and this probably doesn't mean as much as it used to. Uh, this is certainly the first record for General's Handbook 2020. The Greywater yeah. Fastness Army is locked to the realm of Gairan. So mm. you can't be from any other realm other than Gairan. What does that mean for you now under GBH20? Is this is this a big thing? Uh, yes and no, because Greywater artifacts are really nice, so you don't need to worry as much. But if you want to check the cheeky little diadem and go, cool i'll stick that on my general just in case so i can heal some cheeky little wounds and you know keep that general around for a bit longer if you wanted to play it that way which is fine uh, i don't do it because i personally prefer the city's artifacts itself but it's an option yeah yeah i mean i mean i, I play mostly in in, in actually right so i'm i'm mm. running around with a plus one or some type of wounding sword which mm. isn't very helpful in my hello heart the last thing i want to do is put wizards into combat yeah. so so i'm locked to guy right it means that i either choose my artifacts from my book mm. or i'm choosing the realm specific guy run mm. from general's handbook not malign sorcery unless your opponent or yeah, yeah. tournament is allowing malign sorcery mm. Rune Law. So you're in the hero phase. One of your Grey Water Fastness Rune Lords can chant the following prayer in addition to any other prayer on their war scroll. So already your Rune Lords have a prayer. Mm. So you get an additional prayer. On a two mm. plus, that prayer is answered. On a one, uh, it's not answered. So I'd like, mm. let's say, your Slaughter Priest in Corn, mm. where you can take damage by rolling a one. There is no damage here. It's just a two mm. plus, the prayer is answered. The couple of options you've got here is you've got the rune of unfaltering aim. So basically, uh, I've pick a friendly war machine within three inches of the, the model. So who's pray, praying? Uh, at the start of your next hero phase, add one to the hit roll for the attacks made by missile weapons for that unit. Um, mm. Do you like that prayer? Oh, yes, baby. <laughs> Hook me up with more, please. <laughs> but basically, what this rune allows you to do is to go, oh, no, I didn't bring a Harakana. That's okay. I can boost my volley gun or I can boost my rocket blaster 
with that extra plus one to hit and go, cool, I really need that thing dead. You get the plus one to hit and you're hitting on twos re-rolling. Off you go. Go shoot that guy. Which is really nice. And then you can use your other runes. Because you... I call them runes, but also like to refer to as striking the runes, because I'm an old dwarf player. We're striking the runes. We ain't praying to no silly gods. We're striking runes. You're praying <laughs> to Sigma, clearly, in the cities of Sigma. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you strike these runes, and so you've got two, two other options. Oh, there we go. Two other options. You've got um, your rune of Forge Fire, Forge Fire rune which allows you to add one to the rend of all that unit's when, uh, all that unit's weapons in shooting and melee. Which is may not sound like much, but when you got a unit of Iron Drakes, which have already got rend one, now they're rend two on all their guns, and now they're rend three on the big gun, and they're melee, yeah, they're fours and fours, one damage, but now they're fours and fours with rend one, mm. which is really helpful. It may not seem like much, but it, all the little things help. And the other one is the rune of ancestral shielding, which allows you to pick a disp. Both of these two prayers only work on dispossess units. So I can't. So I can't. Change, I can't make the handgunners uh, a plus no. one to their their rend because they're obviously human. So these are going to yeah. work really well with the Duard and synergy. Yeah, yeah. So hence why Greywater tends to lean more towards the dispossessed because you're running a rune lord, so you can boost your your artillery. So you may as well run some dwarf. To make use of his other ability, mm. um, and so the so the third rune which you get technically in grey water is um the rune of ancestral shielding, which allows you to pick the dispossessed unit and on a six up ignore wounds and mortal wounds directed at that unit. So you can boost himself, which is nice, or you can boost like a unit of hammerers or unit of iron drakes to give them that little bit extra survivability against all those nasty seraphon lists and their spamming mortal wounds and stuff like that. So that those two ruins come specifically on the war scroll of the rune yeah. lord, but yeah. in addition to that, we've got the rune law, which is coming in mm. from the allegiance. So basically, yeah. that rune lord is going to be able to cast two, or be able yes. to bang his hammer and get two. But yeah. you, know, you can only do this particular one, the rune of unfaltering aim, once. Um, yes. So it's a nice way to take it, as you said. Hurricane's like what three hundred points, two eight, yeah. something like that. So yeah. that's a lot of po that's a lot of points. So that's a nice little cheeky way if you're mm. already taking a rune lord, and you probably are, um, mm. to, to to get that plus one or a bit of a backup plan if that hurricane goes missing or even kind mm. of gets split up. So um, yeah. I like that. I do like that a lot. You got a couple of other things here. You've got the home yep. of the great iron wheeled guilds. Uh, so essentially, your iron wheeled arsenal. Uh, uh, ranged weapons. Mm. Uh, so, I, yeah, I ranged. so so this is your hurricane. So your hurricane, your um, volley gun <laughs> and your rocket battery. I was going to say health. Also your gyrocopters. Oh, so your gyro are iron world, Yes, because they are ironwood us on the instance. They get the plus three to their range and steam tanks. Whoa, so basically, so all of your little artillery units, so the the cannon. Sorry. I keep saying cannons. <laughs> your volley guns, your rocket batteries, your steam tanks, and your gyrocopters all getting plus three inches to the range, which may not seem like much, but when you've got a steam gun on a unit of three gyrocopters and they get the amount of shots in the unit of sorry, against the target for how many models are in range. And is, so it eight inch, is it eight inches? Eight inches normally. But then you get that plus three inches, and now you're really talking because instead of just getting maybe like half the unit or most or maybe even three quarters of the unit you're getting the whole unit and so for an example from a previous tournament where i played few, oh, a couple of months ago i had a unit of three gyrocopters they were gray order and the guy had a unit of 20 um dryads out in the open not hidden by any pesky trees and so i was saying well that's okay 60 shots merry He's christmas the weed killer. you just got out the weed killer and just got this <laughs> They're dead now. Got them. <laughs> but in addition to the extra three inches of range, you can also include one additional art Iron World artillery unit in your army. So instead of the normal four, if you really want to go all in on those artillery units, you can have five, which but can the be really which have four, right? It is true, but it just means you can have that one artillery piece, which doesn't get to shoot twice, but can you know run off by itself and do its own thing and be a bit of a distraction, which is kind of handy. 
No, it's fantastic. And if you want to, and we'll again, we'll talk about lists soon, mm. guys. Like, I don't know if we keep saying it. I don't want to ruin Christmas for you all, <laughs> but it's cool. Right? You could take uh, four mm. rocket batteries, for example, and then yeah. still have a uh, a volley gun who's moving yeah. up with your four, as mm. an example. So yeah, that's yeah, a nice as, as example, yeah. Mm. And then. Then finally, you get the command ability, which is the salvo yes. fire. So uh, you can use this command ability in your shooting phase. If you do so, pick one friendly grey water fastness free guild handgunner or uh, Iron Drake's unit that is within twelve of a friendly grey water fastness hero. Okay, mm. so it's handgunners or Iron Drake's. Yeah, they got to be within twelve. Mm -hmm. Add one to the attack rolls for attacks made with missile weapons by that unit until the end of the phase. Uh, they you can't stack this, so you can't do it. Yeah. You can't do the command ability more than once uh, on so, a unit, on a on a particular yeah, unit. Yeah. So you could do it yeah, multiple yeah. times. Yeah, you, you can go bam, bam, bam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, but you couldn't do it on the same unit. So you couldn't yeah, yeah. use the you couldn't use the bridge to teleport up a bunch of iron drakes. Yeah. You know, earn three command points to basically make them like four or five attacks and just absolute burn and eight your opponent. Um, yeah, it adds one to hit rolls, not attacks. Oh, sorry, attack. Yeah, sorry, a heat rolls. Thank you. I was getting too so you, excited. <laughs> no, you're good. So you can't just go, oh, look, my own Drake unit's now hitting you on minus four. And now your, I don't know, minus two to hit is now only a two plus to hit. So you can't do that. You can get them to twos to hit, but not like, you know, one plus or zero plus to hit. In my mind, I think I was getting I, I was getting excited about the the, the additional attack from <laughs> from this. I was, I was in a pathway of talking about setting up Iron Drakes and you know double tapping. So, so the command ability gives you plus one to hit, mm. which again is another reason why you may not need to take a Hurricane, mm. uh, especially if you're going into a Dwarden build and oh, yeah. uh, you don't have a free guild wizard. Uh, or a collegiate mm. arcane wizard to take advantage of that uh, plus one to cast. So mm. you may be may find that you've got a better build alternatively. You can still there's still value, but uh, you've yeah, got a couple sure. of options time brewing. Mm. Anything else you'd say about grey water abilities? Uh, not at the moment. We'll save the rest of what I want to talk about when we get to the lists and stuff. But for now, I'm pretty good. So I mentioned right at the episode, uh, Jono, mm. that. Uh, this is your time to convince me. So right now, as a free guild-based player, mostly, mm. uh, I don't own mm. any dwarves. Uh, I only own yeah. very few dwarves, by the way, or dwarves. Yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm not convinced yet, but I can start to see the benefits coming in, mm. especially if you are a dwarven-based player. So yeah. I run a lot of Hellstorm rocket batteries. I like that mm. build. So I'm mm. starting to see the benefits there if I wanted to go five, um, which mm. might be a bit excessive. Um, <laughs> might be, yeah. the plus three range is nice, especially for mm. a volley gun, um, maybe for, yeah, a steam, if, or mm. for, for a steam tank. But I think definitely yeah. what you're talking about, the gyros, the gyros for what, 80 points or whatever it works out to be. 70 points for one and then 180 for free. Gets that's really so cheap. Crazy. That's mm. so cheap. Getting plus three. And they're super fast. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm running Scourge Runner Chariots for the same type of role, but mm. for plus three range, uh, if I was going down a gyrocopter build, mm. I, I can see this benefit there on the world because my rocket battery mm. doesn't need the plus three. Like, it already shoots, no. what, 32, 30, 40? Uh, it's 36 stupid. inches. It's already stupid. It doesn't need to go to 39. Mm. Um, yeah. the, the volley gun, yeah, 12 inches or whatever, 16 inches, mm. whatever it works out to be, it could probably benefit. Um mm. Oh, but. it gets to 27 with the bonus, but what what that three inches lets you do, it lets you think your, your opponent think, oh, he's only got a 36 inch range. I'll be fine. And then you go, no, it's 39. And by the way, I can move up extra three inches and get to the 42 inch mark. And we do tell our opponents before we deploy mm. that this is a rule. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. We, well, we tell we, them, but we, if, we if they're not paying the attention. <laughs> but if they're not paying attention, if they're, not, if they're thinking, oh, it's three inches is nothing, it can catch them off guard. So what it means is, you know, it's going to be very hard. And, you know, a lot of people right now are, are freaking out a little bit of something like Techless or even, mm. you know, your uh, your Lord Croak. 39 inches mm. on a health, uh, on a uh, rocket battery mm. is most, if not all, of the board. And if you're taking two, mm. three, four rocket batteries, you can mm. uh, you can basically own the board. They 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 are still impacted by light of sight now, unfortunately. Mm. I think that's one yeah. of the things that kills with the rocket batteries. You used to be able to go mm. line of sight there now. But still, 39 inches across the mm. board, you can just, like, click, click, croak, you're gone, click, click, techless. Um, mm. You're probably going to take him down pretty quickly as well. So, oh, for um, sure. 
a nice, nice little addition. Yeah, um, so going a little bit into the command abilities and – oh, sorry, the command traits and the artifacts and whatnot. John, do, do, so, do you just want to talk, just want to talk about them – in your list and how they kind of come into well, play? There's a or couple of already... ones which I, I, that I don't use in these my lists, so I just right. want to quickly talk about yeah, them. Yeah, let's talk about them. So just as a um, aside, because I personally usually run Drill Master, and that's the one which allows you within a, wholly within a bubble of 12 inches to real once to hit in shooting phase, which saves you a lot of command points in grey water. That means you can spend the command points on the salvo fire and you can spend them on the um you know ignoring battle shock etc but for a couple of little tricks which people may not have thought about because gravel can actually generate a fair f amount of command points unlike some cities um which are very dependent on command points but can't just don't have that thing to generate quite enough so seat on the council really handy because it's basically another general's adjutant except you don't have to be in range of the general because you are the general so you just roll a four up and it's an extra command point you then take maestro vivetti's magnificent macroscope and on the first turn you get an extra command point so already you're sitting on a comfortable three four five command points and he haven't even had two turns you this is your first turn you've already got a ton of command points and that just helps you do so many things. It's kind of crazy, actually. The other one I want to talk about is the Gulmir Ranger. This isn't how I like to run my Grey Order, but other people like it. Uh, it basically allows your artillery and your infantry and whatnot to run and shoot. So people can be like, oh, I'm hiding right back in the corner. You can't shoot me with your artillery. Ha ha, look at me go. And like, then you can go, that's all right. I'm going to run and shoot you. It'll be fine. Oh, look, I rolled a six. I now have an insane amount more range. So instead of moving three inches, I'm now moving nine, and I can still shoot you, which is really nice. And one last little shout out I want to give out. Oh, two, two more, second last. So, and this is one I just thought of last night when I was writing up my lists for Coach and going, what can I show Coach that might amaze him a little bit? Yeah, sell, so, sell, sell me, sell me this is all. <laughs> okay, here we go. So looking at the artifacts, we've got the Steam Piston Paint Mail. And what it does is add one to save rolls for attacks that target the bearer. So basically, you know, plus one to your save, which is really nice. It means your Rune Lord's like a free plus save or your Ordinator's like a free plus save. Well, you know, really fun things. But what you can do, and what can be really sneaky, you can stick it, and it gives plus one to your movement as long as you don't have a mount. But that's that's nice. But it's not what you want to want. You want it for the plus one save. And what you do with it is you stick it on a anointed on Phoenix. So now he's rocking a free plus save. And then you stick a wizard next to him, and now he's on a two up, and you can have that the entire game. And that's kind of sneaky because you can just go, oh no, you're going to kill my Phoenix. That's all right. He's got a two up save. Have fun with that. And he's got so a four up. So so we're talking the Phoenix. So basically, if a spell is cast within 12 inches of the Phoenix mm. on a two plus, you get plus one to your armor stave that doesn't mm. stack. You can only do it once. So mm. uh, it doesn't mean you'll have to have a wizard in range. Um, mm. But the base of a Phoenix can, can be nice as well because that's a nice mm. little buff area. But it does yeah. mean a Phoenix might not be uh, going in to do damage, uh, depending no. on how you build it and what you do with it. But so It is a very big, um, you can't kill me. Here's my drill master, even bigger bubble, so you can spread out your forces even more and get a bit more maneuverability. I think for, uh, I think for me, like the, the one area hmm. that Tempest Eye comes into play is I think about the uh, the command trait for a shooting hmm. based Tempest Eye, and that yeah. is the Hawk Eye. Hawk Eye with the plus one to wound just hmm. makes it super attractive. Like I know when hmm. I was running my Tempest Eye, playing around with you know multiple uh, rocket batteries. I yeah. had a Hurricanum. I had a um, a Knight of Zeros, so mm. I didn't have Drill Master, but my Knight of Zeros mm. allowed me to re-roll ones as long as it was within 10 yeah. of the opponent. And I was hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, mm. wound, wounding on twos. So those rocket batteries, you mm. know, it was, I was almost hitting 99% of the time. Yeah. Um, it was brutal. So mm. you are losing that plus one to wound. Uh, you but you are getting other, other, other different benefits and different ways to get pluses to hit. So I think either way, mm. they're a nice 
ways there's, to build these lists. Different ways because I mean, Tempest Eye, you're relying on your zeros to get in nice and close, so you can get those real ones to hit. Whereas in Grey World with Drill Master, you can go, I'm not going anywhere near you. I can stand right back and just blast away. So there's pros and cons. Yeah, or you're burning a CP to do that. But I think mm. either way, I think what we're just highlighting is some of the differences mm. and, again, uh, the synergies and the differences between the two. So I, I, I am starting to see the benefits. Mm. Um, I'm not, mm. again, completely sold just yet. But <laughs> you are you are seeing, like, like I don't have to spend uh, 100, 120 points for an Azeros mm. because I've got that inbuilt naturally in grey water yeah. when it's not available in mm. Tempest Eye. So something to consider. Mm. Anything you want to add with the artifacts and or the command traits, or do you want to get into your first list? Uh, not too much more. I mean, spell-wise, you've got some nice little tricks. You can take Descending Ash Cloud to get you the minus one, though with my list I've got a Sorceress, so I don't need that. Though um, Choking Fumes is rather nice. If your opponent's got a massive Horde unit in front of your your wizard, you can go, cool, everyone in 15, on a 5-up, take Mortal Wounds because I'm a wizard and I'm mean. But spell-wise, the Grey Water spells aren't too crazy, so you're not taking the Grey Water for the spells. All right. Well, let's get into your first list because mm. I do see a couple of these things, and let's uh, let's put the theory into practice. So mm. we are a Legion Cities of Sigma. We are from the mortal realm of Gairan. We are Grey Water Fastness. So list build mm. number one. We have yes. uh, a couple of leaders. We have a Rune Lord, mm. which is your general, taking mm -hmm. the command trait of Drill Master and the artifact yep. of Steam Piston Plate Mail. Yep. Talk to me about the Rune Lord. Talk to me about why this is a general. Talk to me about why mm. you've taken Drill Master. Put it all into practice. Sell me on, mm. on, on what this brings to the table. Right. So basically, there's a couple of reasons why I make him the general. The main being I'm teleporting forward my Iron Drakes forward anyway. So if they're getting teleported forward and if he's getting teleported forward, why not make maximum use out of my Rune Lord? So... Hence why he's got the Drill Master to give me that nice little 12-inch bubble to real ones to hit for all my shooting within that radius. And then the Steam Piston Plate Mail is on him, so because he's got a 4-plus base, and that's nice. But that extra 3-plus to save can be, you know, game-changing because it could mean the difference between my Rune Lord just dying first turn or going, I'm still alive one wound, take that, I can still give my bonuses. And um, it also gives him that little bit of extra move because dwarves are slow. So a five inch instead of a four inch is handy. And then obviously we talked about the prayers as well. So we know mm. that they, they're going to get the yeah. additional prayer for being grey water and rune lords yeah. already have the inbuilt two prayers they yeah. can tap into. So so um, hence yeah sorry um so hence why um you take the rune lord as a general because it means all those nice little synergies that dwarves get. You go cool my rune lords giving everyone real ones to hit. He's using the command ability to make it twos. And then he's using the two up uh, forge fire rune to go cool. All my Andrex are now rend two and the big guns rend three. So in that one model, those 90 points, you're getting an insane amount of value out of him. And we'll find out very soon what we're putting through the bridge, but I'm sure you sneaky, <laughs> sneaky people already know what's coming up. <laughs> Next sure. thing is we have our first elf in the list. We have the sorceress. Mm. Uh, she is coming in with the lore of smog with uh, choking fumes, mm -hmm. and she is the adjutant or adjutant, mm. depending on where you are. Yeah. Um, so so why, why is she the adjutant or adjutant, and why mm. choking fumes as opposed to the other two spells available? Right. So um, so the Sorceress in list for a couple of reasons. Chief among them being it's a lot easier to get plus two to cast on her than it is for like the Hurricanum or the, the Battle Mages. Because I don't have to spend hundreds of points. I can spend 90 points and then another 90 points. 180, I'm still cheaper than a Hurricanum and I'm getting more models and I'm getting another screen basically for free. And... It allows my wizard, who's already going to be teleporting forward, to stay in range of the general and generate more command points as the game goes on. Uh, checking fumes is because descending Ashkar, which is minus one to hit, it's handy, but she's already got a spell that does that, which is word of pain. So there's no real point in taking descending ash cloud. And eroding blast relies on picking a, a terrain piece. And making it deadly, but also going cool. Everyone within one inch of that terrain piece takes a mortal wound on the five plus, which can be really good, 
but it's heavily reliant on your opponent being near a terrain piece. It's not as good, in my opinion, as choking fumes, which just goes, cool, all these enemies are in my face anyway. Let's just roll some dice and hopefully kill a bunch of guys. I think that's a pretty fair fair call. Um, you've obviously got a roading, is it a roading blast as well? Yeah, that's the terrain piece. Which yeah, yeah is that's like, the terrain yeah. piece, my name. So, it, yeah, like, okay. I, I look at that and I go, eh. Like, it could hmm. be okay, but deadly isn't as as powerful as it used to be. If it was no, old, it's not. like BBH1 deadly, hmm. where basically on a roll of a six or a one, it's just like auto slain. Um, yeah. I would definitely take that, but new deadly, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of meh. I'll be right. I'll be right. Um, and the sorceress is good. I think there's a lot of mm. good value. And battle mages just went up in points in general's handbook. They 20. did, yeah. Uh, sorcer sorceresses remain untouched. So mm. for 90 points for a cheap caster, um, with or without her little stabby stabby group of like, like <laughs> Drake, Drake, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, um, Dread Spears or yeah, um, her, her groupies, yeah. Yeah, like without those, like you get the plus two to cast. Mm. She's still great value at 90 points. Oh, for sure. You've got your Cogsmith. Uh, no surprise mm. we're taking a Cogsmith. The Cogsmith <laughs> comes in with the world's longest artifact in the world. I'm just going to call it the macroscope. Um, why <laughs> Why one. is the Cogsmith taking the macroscope and why the Cogsmith, um, what does this bring mm. to the table? Right. So the Cogsmith is taking Mestre Vivetti's magnificent macroscope. I love that name. It Say is that three fantastic. Times. Say that oh, please no. <laughs> <laughs> Say three times fast. Uh, no, nah, so um, he's taking this artifact for two reasons. Chief among them is the fact that the macroscope gives you a command point, start of the first turn, just have a command point. Doesn't matter whose turn it is, just start of the first battle round, just get a command point. Which for Greywater is fantastic because you're using lots of command points. So anything that gets you the extra one command point is valuable it also in addition to that allows you to add one to your hit rolls for the weapons made with the wet with the bearer's weapons and the cosmos got a shotgun and he's got pistols so you may as well use it on him right get get the most use of it as you as you can and because the cogsmith already gets plus one to hit if he focuses his, on his guns so he's on a freeze instead of fours the macroscope then goes cool now it's hitting on twos so he's a nice little you know sniper if he gets his shots off it's not anything scary but it can be rather handy and it's only 60 points as well so mm. uh certainly a nice little buff piece for your war mm. machines which i'm sure you're going to have in mm. your list but for, for 60 sure. points it's cheap hero you're going to get a nice yeah. little artifact do some damage mm. um he's nice... also in... oh, sorry no please oh he's also in the list because you have to have him for the battalion which we'll go into a bit later, but basically he's the leader of the battalion and then you got all your fun little toys that come with him. Gotcha. So in this particular list we have, um, and then look, you know, even when I'm not running the battalion, I take mm. Cogsmith regardless. Oh, for Cogsmith, sure. Cogsmith for me is auto-include, as is the Lord Ordinator is mm. an auto-include. Before we get if to that. If you're running artillery, heck yes. Yeah. Okay. We're talking artillery. I'm not taking a Lord mm. Ordinator in a Hello Heart R list. But in <laughs> no, a, in a, no. Even if I Tempest Eye when I base mm. it around War Machines, I am taking a Lord Ordinator and I'm taking oh, a sure. Cogsmith. That just auto-includes. Because on the War Scroll for your artillery pieces, for the, the Volley Gun and the Hellblaster rocket batteries, they specifically state, if you have an Iron World Arsenal engineer within three inches, get bonus X. Yeah. And so for the, for the rocket batteries in particular, it's real ones to hit. So you can teleport forward your Drill Master on the Rune Lord and still have real ones to hit on your cannons, I mean, on your rocket batteries. There's been times where I've actually run by Tempest Eye, again, without the battalion, because this mm. battalion is locked to grey water, yes. um, where I've split up my two rocket batteries. I've had two on the left, two on the right, mm. and I've run two cogsmiths on either side. Mm. So, um, they're, you know, again, for 60 points, they're cheap enough that you can run two, should oh, yeah. you not want to have four rocket batteries, you know, castled up in, in mm. this, little, this little corner. Yeah. Um, so you've got some flexibility there. Mm. Got your Warden King. Warden King I've comes Warden stock King. standard, no special mm. artifacts, no additional stuff. No. Nah. What's the Warden King bring in? The Warden King is there for a couple of reasons. Two reasons, in fact. One reason is because I'm running 70 Dispossessed, he can stand on his oath stone in the start of the hero phase, and all the dispossessed units within 18 don't take battle shock. He just goes, 
oink, man up, you wimpy dwarves, and no one takes any battle shock, which is really good if your opponent is taking lots of chunks out of your army. You go, oh no, I'm on my oaf stone. It's fine. The other reason you're taking Warden King, as you'll see a little bit later on in the list, in fact, next section, in fact, I'm taking some hammerers and any kind of melee unit for dwarves because it's dispossessed only. If you target an enemy within 16 inches, allows you to get extra attacks against that unit. So it means my hammer is instead of only having two attacks each and having three attacks each, and they're all really um, doing extra hits, and you know, it makes your hammer is just that a little bit more scary. I mean, you can, if you really need something dead, you point at that unit and go, Oi, I don't like you, and smack them, not living daylights out of them with 20 hammers, 30 hammers, whatever you're running. Yeah, love it. Um, and again, uh, if you're running Dispossessed, Warding King, absolutely. If, you, mm. if you're running Phoenix Guard, the Anointed on foot is definitely mm. at minimum. Uh, you yeah. know, and, and I guess especially yeah. like right now, you've got this Lumineth build that's coming that is going to potentially require you to use two command points when you normally mm. use one. So anything that gives you this inherent immune to battle shock, and again, mm. Phoenix Guard are immune to battle shock within 18 of the Anointed. Warding mm. King does that with your Dwarves. Um, mm. Again, that is value for money, uh, mm. let alone the additional benefits that come with mm. said character. Yeah, yeah. There is a small caveat, though. If you use the Oath Stone on your Warden King, he can't move. So if you're using it, you got to be sure you, that you want to use it because if you use it, he's not moving. And so when your hammer is run off to charge and beat up the bad guy, it could bring them out of range of the synergies that come along with being near the Warden King. Yeah, and as a free guild player, I know there's that rule, especially like with mm. my hold the line from the free guild general, mm. not having not even being able to move um, to get the plus one to hit, plus one to wound. So, mm. uh, but yeah, do be, do be mindful. I know when I used to run that with my free guild general on foot, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't use that in the first turn. I would like run mm. up the board, get my space, and then embrace the charge or embrace where I want to be on the board, and then step mm. on the step on the stone or you know use yeah, CP. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your last character you've got is a Lord Ordinator. Uh, again, it's your first Stormcast mm. model in this, in this uh, book. It's not yeah. an ally. So uh, Cities of no. Sigma players doesn't count as an ally. So mm. you can take as many points as you want as Stormcast, as long as it's mm. one in every four unit choices are Stormcast. Yep. Why of all the Stormcast, and I know the answer to this, but, you know, yeah. until the folks at home, why the Lord Ordinator comes in and why <laughs> is it literally an auto-include? I can't imagine a Grey Water Fastness build where you don't bring a Lord Ordinator. Mm. So, Shock Horror, you're running artillery units or war machines in this case. And Shock Horror, he boosts these units to give them plus one to hit. So he's got a nine-inch bubble of, if you're an order war machine, within wholly within nine inches, get plus one to hit and because you're already running in most gray water lists the second list you're going to see doesn't have any war machines oh dear but um <laughs> um but if you're running artillery and you don't want to run a hurricanum he's literally half the points of the hurricanum he gives you the plus one to hit and means that um <laughs> You've got more flexibility in your list, basically. And he's also, depending on how you arm, he's got some nice little melee attacks if he needs to go and smack some stuff. I prefer the big hammer. Uh, mm. I've been backboarded once or twice, or, you know, mm. um, someone's found a way to sneak behind me. Mm. The Lord Order does some decent damage in combat mm. with that big grand hammer. So mm. uh, it's a nice little protector, but it's certainly not going to swing the game. Oh, he, uh, he's should. not going to, but he, he's, he's got that nice little. He's all got dual hammers or the big hammer. I prefer big hammer because big hammer. Come on, man. So cool like, hammer. But, you know, D it depends on how you want to run, but basically he's there to boost your artillery. Yes, absolutely. If you're running, yes, so the caveat for what I said before mm. is if you are running artillery, uh, we're talking about uh, rocket batteries or volley guns. Uh, mm. I probably wouldn't do it if I was running solely gyrocopters. Yeah. Your Lord Ornator absolutely is a must take. Mm. From a unit selection, you've taken 20 hammerers, 20 iron drakes, 10 mm -hmm. long beards. Uh, 10 Dread Spears, and we know why we're taking the Dread Spears. Mm -hmm. One, it says screen. Two, mm. uh, the Sorceress can can elect to stab 
uh is it one or two what's the uh, just one guy you stab a guy over in free and go cool you're dead post two to my cast thanks and yeah so by stabbing one of your units uh, i hope mm. youtube doesn't demonetize me or something by saying stab so many <laughs> times uh, but you, but by taking out one of the models from the unit yeah uh the sorceress does get a natural plus two to cast yeah. so uh, very nice little boost and she obviously gets a little screen of dread yeah. spears we've got one Consider gyrocopter mm. one gyrocopter mm. Considering in the in the meta these days, you've got so many units that just go or like considering Croak and um, I don't know Teclas and all those who get so many bonuses to cast. That plus two to cast could mean the difference between getting off your spell or not. So it's really helpful for your list. I, I, I truly believe when we get out of COVID and we go into the new meta, uh, your baseline caster with no pluses, you're going to have a really tough time in some of mm. the armies. That out. you need to start looking at ways to get plus one plus two plus three any way to boost your cast but john i talk to me why hmm. why 20, 20 hammers uh why not 30 um again talk, talk me through you know hmm. why why yeah, the, yeah. why the size uh and even like with the long beards why great axe as opposed to any other hmm. weapon option? for sure so um i take 20 hammers because well Yes, you can get 30 for only what, 60, 80 extra points, which is really nice. But um, it fits the niche of there are just both my hammer and my anvil in this list because they're going to smack you about if you don't deal with them. And if you do deal with them, you're not dealing with my iron drakes, you're not dealing with my cannons. And so they're distracting you and still smacking you about, which is really nice. And they synergize, as I said before, with the Warden King. Because he allows you to, um, sorry, he allows you to get your plus one to hit, uh, plus one attack on that unit. And because hammerers have a specific ability, which allows them on a six to hit, unmodified six, I should say, um, to get uh, deal a mortal wound in addition to your normal damage, which is rather nice. But by getting that extra attack on the unit. It allows you to um, get more chances for those sixes. Mm. Allows you to possibly do five, uh, ten mortal wounds instead of five, or you know, um, twenty instead of ten, depending on how many lucky sixes you get. So the warden king and the hammers really synergize well together, and just allow you to have that combat threat which grey water armies traditionally at least before i started really thinking about it i wasn't running much melee and so i was getting caught up pretty hard because i'd have a lot of shooting but as soon as melee came along it's just like oh well shit i'm screwed <laughs> and we've got a lot of fast moving you know we've got our hmm. base uh, base claw raiders we've got our hmm. um our ogre more tribes sorry our, 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 our more tribes is base claw raiders but you've got your yeah. uh your auric war clans you've got a lot of hmm. builds that are becoming very fast i mean hell my yeah. tempest eye is crazy fast so oh yes um so thinking about being uh combat and shooting uh, is mm. definitely a good consideration. So you got your hammerers, and your hammerers combine quite well with your warden mm. king. Yeah. Uh, surprise of the century. Uh, if I scroll down this list a little further, uh, oh, what a surprise! We have the salt screen bridge. Yes. So let's combine this now. We've got the salt screen bridge. We've got our mm. sorceress with our plus two to cast potentially when she mm. stabby stabbies. Yes. Uh, we've got our iron drakes. We have our mm. rune lord. Talk to me about the combination now as opposed to just talking about it in its isolation. Right. Okay. So start off with, study your hero phrase, you stab a guy, or oh, sorry, you lovingly remove a guy from the battlefield <laughs> yep. um, with your sorceress from the Dread Spears, and then go, cool, I'm casting my bridge. So most of the time you'll get this off, there's the occasional time where you'll roll really poorly even with the plus two and you'll fail to go off. That's okay with this list because it doesn't rely on it, but you prefer it going off if you can. So once the bridge has gone off, you then stick... So the bridge has to teleport a unit, or any now amount of units, I should say, which is really key with this list, as you'll soon see in a moment. Um, from bridge a to bridge b and bridge b has to be wholly within 24 inches but you can place that most of the way across the board which gray water isn't a fast list it can be but it's not usually if you're running artillery 
And so by running the bridge, it allows you to get that maneuverability, allows you to get in your opponent's face and fire off your guns. So basically, in the hero phase, you cast the bridge, and then you strike your runes, and so you go... If you're trying to kill something, like kill it dead, don't let that thing survive, you'd go the extra forge... You go forge five for the extra run on your iron drakes, and then that's basically your hero phase done. And yeah, by the way, the bridge, the bridge volley was set up is between bridge hmm. A. So you basically put down bridge A. That has to hmm. be within a certain range of the caster. Yeah. Then the second bridge uh, is hmm. put within 24 inches wholly of the first bridge. Yeah. So basically uh, thinking about your first bridge and your second bridge, hmm. outside of cities, that distance is only 12, I think it is. But yeah. within cities, it's 24. So this is where Jonathan's yeah. now talking about you're going to teleport to, between two bridges, but hmm. you're going to put down bridge A first. Yeah, yeah. So bridge A goes within six of the holy within six of the cast, and then you drop your second bridge, holy within twenty-four of the first bridge, and then you teleport things up in your movement phase. I will note, and it hasn't really come up in my games, all units within, I think it's like six inches or something, get minus one bravery. It hasn't really affected me because um I use my compounds to mostly ignore battle shock, or I use the Rune Lord's Oafstone. I'm um, Rune Lord, sorry, the Warden King's Oafstone. But that is a thing to note. If you don't have those ignoring battle shocks, you're going to be negatively affected if that happens. But so yeah. Yep. And the other one mm. I'll point out is that the mm. bridge is a really big base. Mm. So pre measure, uh, really practice your deployment because mm. you, you'd be surprised how easy it is to fail that first cast because as you put mm. the bridge down, it's not where you need it to be. Yeah. Uh, you've got one one model that is um, is too hard or is, is you know is blocking the base, and you're not mm. going to be able to teleport what you wanted to teleport. So yeah. um, maybe when you're deploying, um, you want to practice by putting a, a base down. Uh, mm. Just be mindful of that. Uh, your mm. opponent's going to know. They're going to see the bridge. They're going to mm. know what you're going to do. So it's yeah. no 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 surprise. Well, uh, but just yeah. a little trick. I mean, when I like to deploy, when I deploy my, I like to get my first bridge. Stick it within six of the cast. And my most of my, in fact, all my opponents so far have been like, "Oh, that's fine. You're just measuring where your guys are going, so they know exactly what you're doing. It's up to them to try and stop you doing it, basically, at that point." Yep. So keeping um, your sorceress, so, for example, out of dispel hmm. range as well is oh, yes. a nice little trick that you want to consider because hmm. my first, and if I only had one unbind, it is going hmm. for the bridge every time. If oh, I had yes. the if I had a uh, knight in cantor with my auto unbind. I'm mm. going to use that, that first that that first one on you mm. to stop that bridge because it's going to hurt. The, mm, because the sorceress is your only caster, they're going to go bridge bad. Stop now. Yeah. So mo moving on through the list, the long beards are there to when you've teleported in the hero phase. The long beards can grumble. They have got three grumbles. One's plus one bravery. One's um. Uh, can dispel an endless uh, attempt to dispel an endless spell, which is which is nice. But what you're taking them for in this list is the real ones to wound in any phase um, for dispossess units, holy even twelve of the unit. And so this combo is really well for the Iron Drakes because they're hitting you on twos, thanks to the salvo fire. They're wounding you on threes. They're reeling ones to wound, and they got negative two on all the little guns and minus three on the big gun. And so you're just blowing away a target. You're just teleporting up and going, right, pick that thing, destroy it. Um, moving a little bit. Oh, oh, for the great, the reason why they've got great axes is because great axes actually got a boost. They used to be fours and freeze minus one, one damage. Then they actually just freeze and freeze minus one, one damage. So it's, it's a nice little, we can smack things about. Before we get to the gyrocopters, I can't mm. remember if we talked about this, but I just want to bring it up just in case or to reinforce mm. this. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the other benefits of teleporting the Iron Drakes is that the Iron Drakes get plus one attack if they don't move. So if they're yes. outside of three of an opponent and they don't move, um, mm. they they get plus one attack. Yes. Um, for someone listening to this, they're like, wait a second, Anthony, you've teleported them with the bridge. The mm. bridge counts as a setup. Not it's a, a setup, not a move. So what actually what that also allows you to do is because it's a setup, you're not moving, you can jiggy or you can move around your models while you're putting them down. So and it may seem a bit janky and a bit rude to your opponent, but it's it's set up, so it's not technically a move. So you can go, cool, 
let's see the exact best positions for each of these units, which I'm putting out. So the hammers are out front, depending on how close you need to get. It's either the Iron Drakes or the Longbeards next. And then your Rune Lord and your Sorceress are tagging along to keep up and help boost the um, models. And the Dread Spears are hanging nearby in case you need to recast the bridge. So you can teleport to a different location and stuff like that. The gyrocopters. Sorry, moving yeah. on to the gyrocopters. No, just, 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 just one quick point mm. um, as well. With the move not being a setup mm. or setup not being a move, so that's mm. going to benefit. And I, I know we're not we're talking a little bit outside of this particular list, but that yeah, that yeah. rule that rule applies with handgun as well. So if you were to teleport mm. handgunners, they have an yeah. ability that gives you uh, benefits if they don't move. I think mm. they get plus one to hit or plus one to win. Uh, plus one to hit, yeah, yeah, plus one to hit. So that's a benefit. Uh, that same rule applies if you're in Living City. So when you mm. when you when you set up a unit on the side of the board, uh, that is a setup, not a move. So again, yep. the, the Iron Drake or the handgun and benefits that yeah. we're talking about here uh, are, are, are beneficial in other armies mm. as well. So just keep that in mind if you're new to yeah. Age of Sigmar, if you're not familiar with that rule. Setup mm. is not a move. For sure. Um Gyrocopters. as well. I, oh, I'll, yep, bring so. it, I'll, I'll bring it back on track now. Gyrocopters. <laughs> Gyrocopters. So, Gyrocopters are in here for a couple of reasons. Chief among them being, I don't want to run too many Stormcast units. I want to get maximum benefit out of my come up my um uh, battle traits, and so both of these gyrocopters. It, it doesn't give you the option in a War Scar Builder, unfortunately. But both of these gyrocopters are under steam guns, and because they're grey water, because they're an ironwood arsenal unit, they're getting the extra three inches. And so now I've got an eleven inch steam gun running around, going, "Oh, you've got a rather big horde unit over here. That's okay. I'll fly over and I'll steam you all." And yes, it doesn't do a lot some of the time, but when it goes off, your opponent's going to feel it. And so other than that, they're also really fast units. They're 16 inches without even running. Well, you know, boosting the speed or whatever you want to call it. So um, they're really nice for objective grabbing because your army is reasonably fast thanks to the bridge, but it allows you to go, Choom, I'll go steal these objectives first, second turn and get those extra um, objective points. Yeah, and and look, you know, they, they uh, we were talking offline um, before we hmm. started, or maybe we started, maybe we talked about online. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> uh, I'm getting old, and, and isolation's making me go crazy. But uh, I use Aether Wings uh, for this hmm. exact reason. You know, for forty points, yeah. fifty points to be, they're cheap objective grabbers. They go yeah. out. Um, I mean, the, the the benefits for twenty odd points or thirty odd points hmm. is the gyrocop do some nice damage uh and they've also got an ability that if they fly over their opponent once per battle they can drop some yeah. bombs on them which is on a two uh, you take two three model wounds it's really a bit it's sneaky a bit cheeky you can maybe take out that last wound on a hero to be really helpful or if you've got a really high armored opponent you mm. know, drop some bombs do some mortal wounds again mm. for 70 points great value and they're independent mm. so they can you know one can go on one flank one can go on the other flank mm. while you do some other damage or whatever for sure Anything else on gyrocopters? No, no that's, uh, there's more on the second list, but for now, that's enough sure. for this one. But yeah, cool. They, 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 they are mm. a good addition. Mm. Uh, the, then we're going to wrap this all up in a nice little bow. We've mm. got the Greywater Artillery Company, which is the battalion mm -hmm. that is specific to Greywater. Yep. Inside of that, we've also got three Hellstorm rocket batteries. So yep. uh, talk to me through why Hellstorm as opposed to Volley Gun in this list. Tell me right. why three, not four, not two. Mm. Uh, anything else on, on the rocket batteries? Right. So um, I've tr in my lists, I've tried the volley gun, I've tried the rocket blast, uh, the hell storms. Um, I personally prefer the rocket batteries just because they're more consistent. They don't accidentally blow themselves up on a, if they roll doubles for their amount of shots, which the volley guns do. Um. And because they're grey order getting the 39 inch range, which turns into 42 if you're not teleporting, which is, you know, really handy. Um, and because they're in the battalion, because they're in the artillery company with the Cogsmith, the Cogsmith has to be within three, uh, I believe it's three or six inches, I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, they have to be in range of the Cogsmith for the ability to work. But assuming they're in range, they can shoot twice on the first turn which is instead of just three shots from each guy, so it ends up being nine shots on the first turn, it's now 18 shots. So if you really need to get rid of a target, instead of a maybe chance, it's now 
you're going to get hurt. This is 18 shots of minus two to your save, two's freeze to hit, reeling to hit, freeze to wound. Gets pretty scary. Uh, it's within six, by the way. I just, I, I just quickly checked. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the battalion requires you to have one cogsmith and then two to four rocket mm. batteries or hell blasters. Uh, and as mm. long as you're within within six inches, um, that cogsmith of the war machines, yeah, they can shoot twice. So if you think about it, 36-inch mm. range plus three from grey water plus then mm. the movement characteristic, yeah. um, they they hit on fives normally, but if they mm. attack the same character, they get um you know plus one. Or th sorry, the, yep. they hit the same unit, they get a plus one. Yep. Uh, then if you get what the pluses from the different parts, whether it's a hurricane, yep. whether it's a rune lord, whether it's the command trait, um, mm. you're basically going to go to twos, wounding on threes. And this is where yep. I think that the the tempest eye comes in really well because mm. Hawkeye makes that a two, so I can mm. be hitting on twos, wounding on twos. Ren mm. minus two for D3 damage. So mm. you truly can point and click. I don't get to double tap like you can in the first turn, mm. but those rocket batteries. And then we talk about the teleporting iron drakes with the uh, with mm. the bridge. We talk about the fast moving gyrocopters. This mm. is a truly offensive turn one. You know, yes. um, I, I don't know if you've counted points, Jonathan, but I imagine mm. that this has the potential to absolutely wreck your opponent in the first battle round to probably well below 50% of their points. Um, I can um, imagine you can brutalize an opponent and maybe mm. they don't have enough um, command points to be able to mm. inspiring presence from the sheer damage that you can put out. Yeah. Uh, it, in most of my games in particular, I was facing another cities player. Admittedly, it was his, one of his first games with cities and I did feel a little bad, but it allowed me to teleport forward my iron drakes go cool you've got iron drakes over there that's okay meet my gray water iron drakes they're going to destroy yours so i could take out his iron drakes i took out a bunch of things and so first turn i'm hitting them extremely hard and then picking a just, section of the army just getting rid of it and i think the other thing as well is um yeah it's just it's just offensive it's just this is brutal mm. and the cool thing as well right is that i see a lot of other people use the iron drake um um uh, 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 soul scream bridge combination mm. and they're really reliant on that getting off and if yeah. you, do, you don't get it off it's like okay i still have this offensive first turn mm. with three four two rocket batteries double yeah. firing so you can still do some really good threat range mm. and then turn two you teleport your iron drakes with the bridge mm. so it's not like you're this one trick pony in this yeah. particular build. You've got tricks and you've got backups for your backups, basically. Uh, so this, this is coming in, by the way, 2,000 points on the dot on the General mm. Sandbox 2020, and you got 114 wounds. Um, mm. Any other points it, you want to make on this particular list, or do you want to get yeah, to yep. the second one? Um, just one quick caveat for this list, Please. and in fact, both lists. The extra command points you're getting may not seem that obvious because you get the one extra command point for the battalion. But because you're running the Vivetti's macroscope, you're getting the extra command points. So in turn one, you got three command points without even touching General Zadigson, without even touching Cedar on the council. So you've already got straight up three command points first turn. And then with Which two you, four pluses, you've mm, got a good likelihood of getting um, four one. or five command points. Yeah, yeah. There's a potential in turn one to be mm. on five command points. You know, at minimum, you're on three. Mm. Um, on average, you're probably on four, so mm. um, that's nice. Yeah, it, it's rather nice for both lists, especially when we're talking about you know burning CP, you know different parts. Mm. Oh, um, yeah, I like this you... build; it's definitely mm. beneficial if you're a Dwarden player. Um, mm. Love the rocket batteries. I love the Iron Drakes. I love you got mm. multiple threats, and you're not just a shooting list. You do have some no. combat punch. Yeah, for sure. All right, list two. All right, cool. That was that was a nice introduction. I think mm. Dwight and players are like, "Yay, this looks great." <laughs> Let's talk the second list. And I know this has mm. no rocket. This has no rocket batteries, no volley gun. So, for no. a war machine build without war machines, tickle me curious. You've got the Rune Lord, who's the general mm. drill master. So we kind of talked about that. Same things. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. We've got the sorceress again. Same deal. We've got the choking yeah, fumes. Yeah. We've got uh, the general's adjutant. Mm -hmm. We now have the anointed. This is a yes. um, Phoenix temple, uh, the anointed on foot. Um, mm. And we've also got a Knight Venator coming in from mm. Stormcast. The Knight Venator does have that macroscope. Uh, what is it? Yes. Full, full name? 
Maestro Vivetti is magnificent macroscope. <laughs> <laughs> cool so we've got the venator has the macroscope so yes uh a little bit of the difference uh the anointed why the anointed why the knight venator mm. where's my smith where's my lord ordinator mm. uh talk me through your leader choices on this second list right so with this particular style of list i've chosen to go more heavily into the salvo fire command ability rather than the um the artillery an Ironwood Arsenal. Well, there is some Ironwood Arsenal units in this list, but it's not cannons. Yeah, uh, it's, so not, it's, it, yeah, it's, so it's not the artillery. And so it's, it's worth to note that the three the three inches extra don't mm. happen on the troops. So your no, hand gunners, your uh, iron drakes, they don't mm. get the benefit because they're not no. Ironwood Arsenal. It is only your war machines that get the plus yeah. three. Yeah. So um the reason for the anoint is because in this particular list, unlike where my hammer is act as both hammer and anvil, I have a unit of 20 Phoenix Guard in this list to act as the anvil. They are there to tank, take the objective and go, we're not leaving. Merry Christmas. Oh, by the way, we're not taking battle shock because we've got our friend to be anointed by us. Um, the Knight Venator's in the list because he's got a bow. He's got a bird. They both shoot. So... Now the bow's now hitting on a one plus. The bird's hitting you on freeze. Um, it boosts his shooting, but it also means that star faded arrow has a better chance of going off, especially if your opponent's got, I don't know, the lookout so or some nasty combo which makes them like minus three to hit or some crazy nonsense. Because the star faded arrow is once per game, right? It is, yeah. Once per game, it does um, d three damage so, plus yeah. three. Against uh, non monsters and against monsters, it's just d6 plus three. So it's a nice little bam, I blow your brains out with my nasty arrow of doom. So, especially and with a monster, it... right? Like you could do mm. nine damage to a monster, mm. but you, you really need to be able to, to hit that. So, mm. you know, getting that to a two plus, you know, one mm. plus, and then, you know, reduce a look at sir, you could mm. truly kill one of those really super buff characters. Um, yeah. it's, it's super handy. Mm. For sure. All right, um, Next, is that, that that all? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And the anointed, so, um, you know, and, and talking mm. at the Phoenix Guard and the anointed, I, mm. I run that often. Um, yeah, it's surprising. I now I now have magically a thousand point of Phoenix Guard. I never thought in the day <laughs> I would have a thousand point of High Elves slash Phoenix between the Phoenix mm. Guard and my, my my Frost and Fire Phoenixes and that. Mm. But the anointed is a wonderful because it has a base four up plot save, then it has mm. a, a four up uh, damage prevention role. So mm. uh, it is a, a wonderful, and in, in fact, this is also a really nice um, adjutant mm. as well because it has two options to kind of reduce mm. its save. And then obviously the benefits mm. to the Phoenix Guard. Mm. I would also point out he's a sneaky little extra dispel because you've got your Rune Lord who gets a plus two to his dispel, which is really nice because, you know, dwarves and anti magic. You got your sorceress. And because the, the, the anointed on Phoenix doesn't get it, but the anointed on foot gets an extra dispel because he's like, oh, I don't like magic. Boom, kill the magic. Yep. And, so, and endless spells as well. Mm. So it means that um, you've got free dispels, especially in this which is probably going to be a very magic-heavy meta. <laughs> Unlike my first list, where I've only got the two, I've now got three dispels. I can have a little bit more choice about what spells I want to try and get rid of. Yeah, the really good shout. The Anointed uh, is is super great value, especially if you're mm. running um, uh, Phoenix Guard. But even if you're not running Phoenix Guard, I really mm. do like the Anointed. It's just super durable. Oh, yeah. um, it, it's just and it does some good damage as well and mm. the combination with the phoenix guard and its command ability is just sexy so we mm. might as well talk about that the phoenix yeah. guard coming to play you got 20 of them and they are your honored retinue yes so they're my retinue because they're really durable they got a four up save base and then oh no i've taken damage a four up to ignore if my general which is the rune lord takes damage he can pass the wins off to them on a four plus and then on a four up they can just ignore that damage themselves so it gives me layer upon layer of extra saves, which they have removed with General's Handbook 2020. They have gone, you can't take a four up, then a four up, then a six up. It's now used to the four up and a four up. And, and what I mean is basically your normal armor save, and then you get your four up to ignore from Witness to Destiny for the Phoenix Gun. And, and some lists did run the Luminarch of, of Heish, which gave you a bubble of six up to ignore. 
which would mean you go, cool, I got my four up armor save. Oh no, I failed that. I got a four up to ignore that. And then as a last resort, I've got my extra six up, which you can't do anymore. But it's still a rather nice unit to go, cool, that runal's probably not going to die, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Look, some people talk about Phoenix Guard mm. going into 30s, and I think there's a big, there is a big temptation because you've got the mass regiment discount. So for an extra 100 mm. points, you get an extra 10 Phoenix Guard. The, mm. the trade-off, I guess, is that you don't you can't do Honored Retinue because you're above yeah. that 20 model limit. Mm. Um, and 30 Phoenix Guard can be a bit um, unwielding on the table. So yeah. it is a lot of body space. Mm. Um, so I think pros and cons here. Um, mm. they, they, they are nice in combat. What, threes and threes? Mm. Rend one, one threes. damage. Yeah. So they're quite good in combat. Yeah, they're, they're um, good in combat. But they're there to defend your, your characters, basically. They're not there to kill. But then when you think about adding an extra 10 Phoenix Guard, you know, one quarter of your army, uh, mm. probably more than that, is is in the the Anointed and Phoenix Guard combination. Mm. So um, I think that is limiting at times. So I mm. think 20 is a nice choice. It's a nice little mm. place you want to be. Yeah. So you've got the 10 Dread Spears, Stock Standard. They're there for the Sorceress. They're there, they're there to go, here, my lady, have the bonus. Yes, I'm next. <laughs> it's a plus two bonus. We know, we know why they're there. Mm. All right. So yeah. Dread Spears had no value other than dying. Mm. You've got your long beards. You've got 10 long beards with uh, yep. great access. You've got 20 Iron yep. Breakers, 20 Iron Drakes, 10 Iron Drakes. This is the first time we've seen Iron Breakers in your list. You didn't have them the last one, did you? No, I didn't. And the reason they are there is because in the new handbook, or in the latest handbook, they've gotten a massive points reduction. And so they can be basically your Phoenix Guard light because they've got a free up armor save for 110 points for 10 guys. So for 220, I've now got 20 Iron Drakes, uh, Iron Breakers, sorry. And yes, they lost a lot of their rerolling saves and stuff, which made them really nice in the last book. But they have a free up save base, and then you chuck Mystic Shield on them, and a free up rerolling ones. You then go Rune Lord, cool, have Ancestral Shielding. I've now got a free up rerolling ones and a six up to ignore. And you stick them in some cover, it's now two up rerolling ones and six up to ignore. So you can really make this a very tanky unit. Mm. And they're cheap, 110 points mm. and 10, right? That's, that's yeah, pretty, so, pretty amazing value there. Mm. And then you've got your two lots of 20 Iron Drakes. So we're going very heavily onto the Salvo Fire. Because, um, well, Salvo Fire makes them hit on twos, and Drill Master makes them real ones to hit. So why not just go whole hog and have 40 guys all hitting you on twos, rolling ones to hit, rolling ones to wound. And one of the units is going to have minus two to your save. The other one's going to have minus one unless you want a second rune, which could be handy because it doesn't restrict your normal runes, only the um, unerring accuracy rune. Mm. So you can fire off your cannons and oh, fire off your iron drakes and just obliterate two, maybe three, four targets because you get that many shots just to blow away things. I'll be honest, I'd be tempted to take a second Rune Lord uh, mm. if I was running two uh, two units of Iron Drakes. But, mm. uh, you know, things are to taste, you know, there's pros and cons mm. on either side. And I guess where's sure. that extra point from? Mm. We know the Iron Drake potential, and, you know, especially mm. when you make it additional, like Ren 2 base, you know, Ren mm. 3 for the special weapon, that's just brutal. Mm. Uh, yeah. Even old Mortec Guard would just crumble with that type of mm. that, that damage output, let alone mm. new Mortec Guard that don't have the, the Petrifix Elite rule yeah. as they used to be. You've got sure, three gyro pounders, which um, this is the first time we've seen them in one particular unit. I mm. know you, in the past you had them as single single models. Mm. So why why we combine them to make it a unit of three? Uh, to start off, they get the massive regiment bonus, which means instead of paying two hundred and ten points for three separate guys, they're getting them in one nice blob. And as I talked about earlier, I can then send this unit to free after the big horde units and go instead of just I don't know ten twenty shots, I'm now getting sixty shots against this unit. And I stick my um, Knight Vanator nearby them. I can give them real ones to hit because they're moving around the board, being that fast deal with the threat unit and firing off lots and lots of shots. And yes, they only wound on fours, but by giving them the real ones to hit, you're making sure that they get more hits to then get more wounds. And basically allowing you to pick an enemy unit and go, cool, you've got a bunch of dudes with only like a five up, four up save. Have a ton of saves. Yeah. 
and you're gonna get three of those uh bomb mm. bomb attacks as well so you know the, mm. have you taken steam guns on the three gyros here as well or have you got yes, yes. yeah you kept the steam guns yeah yeah and soul screen bridge shock horror and all gasp it's there for the drakes it's there for the um the phoenix guard though to, to be fair, you can leave the Phoenix Guard behind. You don't need them as much because you've got the Iron Breakers and the Iron Breakers teleport forward and they've got that really meaty free-up save. And so it allows you to teleport forward and leave the Phoenix Guard at home on an objective or on a particular thing you need to block off Yeah, from your opponent getting to. Yeah, and, and, they're, and they're pretty tough, right? Especially if your Iron mm. Drakes are teleporting up and they're already doing damage to some of the biggest threats to your opponent. Mm. So... Uh, you know, whatever's going to respond to the Phoenix Guard isn't going to be nearly as damaging as mm. what it was uh, should those Iron Drakes have not been teleported up and mm. just done absolute mass damage. Mm. Um, any any other things you want to talk about this particular list before we kind of wrap things up? I've got a couple mm. of quick questions to ask you before yeah, yeah. we kind of wrap sure. up. But you know, any, anything else about this particular list? Mm. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you could drop the bridge. Shock, and this goes against the grain a little bit. You could drop the bridge and take Gilmu Ranger. Because then it means you're saving 100 points and it allows your Iron Drakes to run and shoot. And as well as you could, in fact, stick instead of having the Rune Lord as your general, because you're no longer wanting to, you know, teleport forward the bridge and have your little castle of death. Um, you're now having more mobile units. So you, I would personally consider sticking the command trait of Gulmir Ranger on the Knight Venator, allowing you to have your Steam. I'm sorry, your gyrocopters and your Venator and your Iron Drakes, etc., all being able to run, uh, move, run, and then shoot, and giving you a different form of maneuverability. Which means, therefore, you can you know get in position a bit easier, and instead of um, just moving forward 16, you're now moving forward 22, and then shooting with your um, gyrocopters. Yeah, I, I like it. There's a lot of commonality with some of the things that I'm doing with the Scourge Runner chariots slash mm. the um, the Drake Spawn chariots. Um, certainly, obviously, obviously, differences, but you know, you've got some fast movement there. You've got some real damage potential. Mm. You've got some combat prowess. Um, General's Handbook, this particular edition, is certainly rewarding you for having more units, mm. uh, especially because there are some uh, some battle plans that have like six or eight mm. uh, different objectives. So by having yeah. more units i think you've given yourself a good variety as opposed to mm. overspending in big blocks of hordes yeah so uh, i really like some of your builds uh, to go back to your original our, our original discussion mm -hmm. am i sold on gray water personally no the reason mm. for it is i'm not a dwarf player so mm. my humans like if i take my hand gunners um mm. obviously if i was to go buy them different story mm. but yeah, for yeah. my hand gunners eh, I mean, there's some good benefits there mm. if I go with um, – there is some good benefits if I want to go the artillery route. Yeah. So having, you know, hand gunners to mm. support my rocket batteries, the Lord Ordnate, mm. the Cogsmith, um, that type of build, big thumbs I, I, up. Mm, I would actually be tempted, and I'm personally considering doing actually, getting some steam tanks because they get the plus three-inch range as well and having them, you know, drive up forward and – Blow your enemies apart because that's really nice. And then you can go a more human themed list for your grey water and have the general and have the hand gunners and have a battle mage instead of a sorceress and still have the bridge, but then you're teleporting up your 30 hand gunners and going, kabang, I'm hitting you on twos. I'm reeling ones to hit. I'm blowing you away of you know and bodies though. To I think be the fair, double, I think hmm. the double tap on the rocket battery is where hmm. for me. Personally, that's where I see the benefit of grey water. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Personally, right? Having four mm. rocket batteries, hell, oh, no, I can't do five. Uh, doing four rocket batteries mm. and just going, you know, 30, no, so 40, even 39 inches. Like if mm. I didn't move, you know, mm. standard 39, I just shoot whatever I want to shoot. Yeah. Hitting on twos, wounding on threes, rerolling ones, ren mm. two, uh, D3 damage a piece. Mm -hmm. uh, Techless, Croak, Nagash, uh, mm. There's a lot of armies that will probably crumble. Mm. Carriage and overlords will probably shoot me to death, and um, I probably I won't mean, have a good experience with them. Mm. I mean, speaking to the weaknesses, Greywater does not like fast armies. Nope. That 
that's why you're bringing in the Phoenix Guide, you're bringing in the Hammers, the Iron Drakes to block them off from getting to your guys. Yeah. You also really don't like Sylvaneth, because Sylvaneth have got those nasty little trees, which mean right. you can't shoot through the trees. That's why you're bringing the combat units to bring them out of the trees and go, <laughs> you're out of the trees now, eh? <laughs> Luckily, look, there's not a lot of Sylvaneth players, and to be mm. honest, they're not that strong. But if you mm. look at what's strong in the meta right now, so let's say mm. Zench. Zench, you're going to have a field day with Zench. Like, you want to oh. obliterate that unit of pink horrors. Mm. You want to take out that Gort Summoner before it summons. Mm. You want to take out that big bin chicken. Boom, yeah. you're gone. <laughs> uh, Teclas and friends, see you later, Teclas. You can just oh. point and click Teclas. Teclas, if he gives you first turn, he's going home to mummy crying, going, mummy, mummy, they shot me. Lord Croak and his friends, he's a little mm. Astrid Bearer and his sorcerer. And like, it, mm. you, you will you will point and click Teclas. It'll mm. be the Salamanders coming down from the sky, burninating you. Uh, that will... I would point out with the, the Seraphon list, if they're only running Croak as their only sign and they've got a ton of Salamanders, because I've seen a few of those lists, you take out Croak, what Salamanders? They can't teleport them in. They've got no, no slime. But you've got the ones so... dropping from the sky. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. You can't teleport them in because as soon as Croak's dead, there's no slime, no more Salamanders. So there goes 1,200 points of their army. Poof, gone. And yeah. then the Seraphon player is a huge back foot. So if you think about what's strong in the meta right now, uh, even Petrifix Elite. Petrifix Elite mm. rule has changed now. So they can't put up their shield against shooting anyway, mm. and they've lost one, put their plus one to armor save. So straight up, mm. your tech Guard is a four up. Go on mm. to a six up now with your Ren 2. Um mm. You should be able to obliterate those units of 20 mm. more tech guard, uh, assuming they don't boost them to 40. Oh, yeah, yeah. You want to take out that Gothazar who's regenerating. Mm. Boom. See you later, Gothazar. Um, mm. Even Nagash, man. If there's a, if, there's, if 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 Nagash is still running around, um, mm. there's some serious oh, Nagash damage. is going to die. Nagash is going to be some serious pain. You teleport forward your Iron Drakes, you, tell, you smash him with your um, artillery, and if he's still alive after the artillery, Iron Drake's finish him off. He's no longer a ground, and then that's 880 points of the army just gone. Half your army. Yeah, the, the double click for me, the, that, that first turn double shooting of those mm. rocket batteries um, is just brutal, and I think that's mm. where I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think I think Tempest Die is better consistently across the five turns, mm. but in that first battle round, mm. the, the Grey Water just does it better. They can just absolutely mm. annihilate your opponent turn one. And then mm. it kind of degrades over time. It does, but I, I would argue that Tempest Eye is fast, and it does fast very well. Grey Water is not fast. What it wants to do is it wants to pick a thing and kill it. Yeah. And it does it very well. So while Tempest Eye is the maneuverability, Grey Water has the damage. And that's why I'm, I, I'm – whoa, knocked my mic over. Uh, I think I'm actually quite interested in in trying this build. So I I, I think mm. you've convinced me. You've convinced me that there is viability in grey water. Mm. I am disappointed I didn't get plus three shooting on my handgunners and my iron drakes. <laughs> that's still a big sticking point. I'm mm. still sour that my um, – in the old rules before the Cities of Sigma – that uh, rocket batteries used to ignore line of sight. Mm. For some reason, elves with bows seem to be able to ignore line of sight, but these big rocket batteries can't. Um, yeah. I'm still a little bit salty with that. Mm. But I think as I think about the current meta and I think about what's mm. about to evolve, um, other than Carriage and Overlords, I think th this particular build mm. could be a good answer and a response mm. to the meta. Um, yeah, I mean, I've played against several players. I've played against, um, um, you know, the various high tier armies, and with previous builds, which weren't as effective, but I still had a much better time than I had had previously, where my Slave to Darkness army went against Seraphon and just went, "Well, great! I just get nuked off the board by Croak. I can't reach him. I can't get to him." Whereas my grey water list goes, oh, you're hiding in the corner, are you, Mister Croak? That's okay. I can just shoot you with my artillery. Yeah, you know, Archeon, Nagash, you know, these super, these super mm. powers that are coming out. Um, I think the, the, this particular thing has the answer, but I think the mm. the trap team is going too deep in the shooting. Yeah. So uh, if you go all shooting, mm. as you said, those first turn charging beast claw raiders, those first mm. turn charging more crushes and piggies. 
Um, mm. Those alpha striking carriage and overlords who fly high and drop down from the sky mm. and just absolutely annihilate you, you're mm. going to have a bad time. Mm. Uh, hence why you run the, the screening units of Iron Breakers, of the Hammerers, of the Phoenix Guard to block your enemy off from your shooting cohorts until you're ready to go, right, you've had your turn at shooting me. That's okay. My turn. By the way, one 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 call out as well before we wrap things up, and mm. this might be something people forget about, is with things like the rocket battery, there is a minimum mm. shooting distance of 10 inches. So if somebody is in yeah. your face, uh, so mm. I played my friend Deke, and he had his vampire lord on Zombie Dragon mm. uh, just doing absolute damage to he, he He smashed me hard with um, my – I only took a small unit of Phoenix Guard, and he hit mm. me with like – Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon, Neferata, like three units of Blood Light, Blood Knights, and that just my Phoenix Guard just had the worst saves impossible. Mm. Uh, but once that Zombie Dragon was in my face, I couldn't shoot. So that was like six hundred points that I couldn't shoot with because mm. uh, I was in I was inside that minimum shooting distance. Mm. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're against your ogres against you know a fast army, because that pin mm. will stop you from responding. Mm. That, that's where you instead of running the um rocket blasters you then run the volley guns because they don't have a minimum range and in fact if your opponent's getting close to you they get plus one to hit again and so they don't need the hurricanum because they're already because if they were within 12 they can then go cool i'm hitting on twos yeah and i'm gonna get get better when they they do get better when you're in shorter distance Mm. um i don't i don't know if it's good enough to take i I think it's just more about being smarter with your deployment Mm. with your rocket batteries yeah yeah for sure Jonathan, anything else you want to add on Grey Water? I'm I'm open. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> there was two armies that I thought I would never run. One was Phoenix mm. Temple. One was mm. Grey Water. I'm now convinced that Grey Water has benefit. So well done mm. to you. Um, will I drop Tempest Eye? Probably not. But am I open to it? Yes, I do. I've got four mm. rocket batteries. I have everything i need i'm probably not going to run soul screen breach i'm probably not going to mm. run iron drakes i'll find mm. i'll find my human version of this but mm. i think you've kind of demonstrated enough value that mm. you can really tap into the rules but it d- certainly does between the prayers between you know some of the other rules you are really kind of mm. benefited by running more of a dispossessed dewad and build as mm. opposed to an elf or a human build mm. um uh, another little trick you can actually do if you're grey water if you want to distract your opponents from your artillery and what i've run to actually reasonable effect i haven't fully experimented on it but i have done it to a reasonable success is to run a lord aquila the stormcast hero on the griff charger and you run a unit of vanguard in which case i was running vanguard uh, raptors with hurricane bolt uh, crossbows and you spend a command point and you can teleport this unit to anywhere on the board within six of the board edge and seven away from enemies, unlike the usual nine away. Mm. So it allows you to get this unit of uh, these two units and teleports to the back line. So your opponent has to deal with them because that's a lot of shots just from three or six models, depending how many you're running. And you can just absolutely decimate um, their chaff units, their, um, you know, the anvil units before you even have to shoot them with your artillery, your iron drakes, or even touch them in melee with your, I don't know, black guard or phoenix guard or whatever you're using. Yeah, no, I love it. I think that's where we can start bringing in some really interesting stuff because we mm. haven't really, we, we've only scratched the surface mm. when it comes to Stormcast. And there's so many different options that Stormcast offer. You're right. Yeah. The Lord Aquila is one that people aren't talking a lot about. That was a very mm. old Vanguard build that 2018's called. Mm. They want their list back. <laughs> but you've got shoot cast returning, you know, the mm. you know, storm cast with the, the hurricane or the long bow, long mm. crossbow, whatever long it is. Long strike. Long, that's it. I think I'll get there in the end. <laughs> um, but you've got, you know, you've got, you know, the shooting storm cast. It's very complementary uh, mm. to your list. Uh, or you kind of go down a different route. Or you go the Star Trek, mm. help, you know, mm. bring in that beat, beat, the big beat stick. Uh, if you don't want to be putting all your eggs in one basket of yeah. teleporting iron drakes with a, um, with a soul screen bridge. Mm. For sure. So, I mean, other uh, than look, that, sorry, you've convinced me. I think you've convinced me that this this uh, army is not hot garbage. So mm. um, that was good. I, I, I really enjoyed <laughs> that list discussion, and um, mm. I am open now. Someone needs to prove me wrong that Phoenix Guard and the Phoenix Guard Phoenix Temple 
has a place because I don't <laughs> understand it. I'm yet to crack the code. Uh, people mm. reckon they can crack the code, but I'm yet to see proof. So uh, if you are a, a Phoenix Temple player and you, you've cracked the code, reach out to me because um, mm. I want to hear about it, but I'm not convinced. I haven't seen anyone run it successfully. So uh, mm. I, th I think this particular now more than ever, and I know I keep saying this, now more than ever in the meta, I think this is a good time for, for Grey Water. Before mm. COVID, eh, but now yeah, we've got Crow, so Croak, Zench, Teclas, mm. uh, may, maybe even, um, you know, uh, OBR under Mortis Praetorian. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be a good time for Grey Water. Mm. Grey Water is very good for removing those key buff pieces like Croak, like Teclas, like Nagash, like Archaeon. Um, and secrets, going, you know, mm, like all this yeah, stuff. Like, like Daughters the of Cain. For the army, Daughters yeah. of Cain. You, you pick the thing and you go, cool, I don't like that thing. Remove it. And then the opponent's army has lost that key buff piece, that essential thing, which is keeping that army functioning. And then you can just proceed to dismantle the army from there. Yeah, I think uh, I think the only challenge that I'm seeing right now in this particular build is character and overlords. I've never mm. uh, mm. your more crusher build. Mm. Um, Orcs and your Beast Claw Raider Stonehorn builds because those mm. two particular are turn one charges. Your mm. uh, eels, you can point and click, but the eels are off the side of the board, mm. so you can't get to them, and they're going to zap the crap out of you. Mm. And um, the you other can one, get said, you can get around them with the screening them out with the hammerers, with the iron breakers, with the phoenix guard to block them off again that first turn charge. So they have to charge the unit in front. So then your Iron Drakes go, oh, no, you've charged my my poor screen unit. How dare you? That's okay. I'm going to deal with you now. So you can you can mitigate the um, more Crusher. You can mitigate the um, Ogre more Tribes and their nasty Thunder Tusks and Stone Horns and stuff like that. Sure. Then. It's, not, it's not an auto loss. Hmm. But, but it's, it's, a, certainly... it's a harder matchup. It is, it is a hard. That is where I was going. It is a harder hmm. matchup. Uh, and I would also, um, in talking about Deepkin, I would point out that Deepkin can hamper you very heavily because of their tides rule, because you have to target the closest unit. And if they take the cloud thing, like the cloud, cloud artifact, at midnight, and then you and then he's the closest thing, but you can't shoot him, and your whole stick is shooting. So <laughs> yeah, what can yeah. you do? And, but, and Deepkin is still strong. Mm, Deepkin are very strong. They are rightly feared in the meta. Jonathan, this has been a really good discussion. Is there any shout outs you want to make before we kind of bring this home? Um, mm. I really enjoyed it. Team, if you've listened to this and you've listened to all this through the whole way, uh, please let us know if you found this valuable. I think for me, I was really nervous and very concerned how this show would go because, I, again, I wasn't convinced that Grey mm. Water had some stuff. But mm. seeing the results that you've been having over Tabletop Simulator, um, yeah. And that is that is a very hard meta. That's a crazy hard meta because people mm. don't have to invest in, you know, having fifteen to twenty salamanders. They can yeah. just have a little model and you know control control C. Mm. Um, so you've done really well with this. Mm. Um, I mean, not to toot my own horn, I've done very well. I should hope um, in previous tournaments where I only got to play two out of the four games because I was feeling rather off for the second day, unfortunately. But um, I went two and zero. Just straight out of the bag. I, yes, with the second game, I did clinch it on the time factor, but it was still a win. And so I went 2 and 0 against two different cities' armies who were both very strong lists. But I was like, that's okay. I'm dwarves. I've got my gray water. Let's go. And other games, I've had the potential to win those games where before I would have had no chance. Yeah. Yeah. Great. great yeah. Look, I'm convinced. Mm. Um, Let's. Re I think. I think we're going over old, old ground. Mm. I think I just keep saying <laughs> I'm convinced. I see benefit. Uh, I. But I mm. won't go the Duarden build, but uh, I definitely mm. will be interested in seeing what I can do with mm. my cities with Grey Water. Jonathan, mm. any shout outs? Any want to call out before we kind of bring this home? Yeah, oh, for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, John Rocco, your boy, uh, Rocco <laughs> from your Discord. <laughs> Great man. He's helped, he's encouraged me, and so have um, Buckets and the, the Squirtle from your Discord. Um, don't give my Liam. People, don't give them, them <laughs> shout outs. They, they, <laughs> they've had enough airtime. No, the, no, the Discord is great. Uh, they're, yeah, yeah. they're a wonderful um, humans. You know, big big oh, shout out to all of them. S seriously, though, um, AOS Coach Discord, 
constantly growing, getting new members every day. Great resource, not just for cities, much as Coach and I love our cities. There are people playing Chaos. There are people playing Death, Destruction, doing all kinds of crazy shenanigans, constantly growing. It's a fantastic Discord. Um, other than that, I... I recently learned I'm over 500 members. Like, I remember mm. at the start of the year when, when I set this up as, like, a Patreon-only thing. Mm. It was, like, five of us, and we're having a great mm. time. But mm. now it's, like, 500, 600 people. Like, where are you all yeah. coming from? So uh, <laughs> it is very cool. Like, people sharing mm. pictures of their dogs, people of, like, posting their work in progress, people talking mm. about their lists, uh, play, people playing games on our internet, um, like, little little streaming service. Mm. It's very cool. So, yes, shout Running out to tournament. me and my It's group. crazy, <laughs> shout out to yourself <laughs> but um shout out to coach for challenging me because i mean if he hadn't have gone oh i don't see gray water as a good army if they're, they're awful prove me wrong i wouldn't have done this i wouldn't have gone well i'm gonna prove you wrong sucker watch me go <laughs> and i like to think i've done so i've found ways around and this video has been delayed a bit, little bit because i wanted to see the point changes and in fact, the point changes were very beneficial for Greywater because my particular build, a good chunk of the doors got cheaper. We also we also had the impacts of mercenary companies. So if we mm. were to record this video team, here's a little here's a little taster for people who have hung out this long with us, is that mm. uh, in the old General's Handbook, uh, Jonathan actually had found some little secret list tech that you could mm. use a mercenary company, and the mercenary company in particular was there as a cannon, a formerly the old Empire Great Cannon that uh, mm. you could bring in, or maybe it was the Dwarf Cannon, but either way, it was Iron, Iron World Arsenal. Mm. And those cannons were not in Cities of Sigma, but they were Iron World key, keyworded. And yes. you get the plus three ranges, you get all some of that Iron World benefits that mm. uh, you were tapped into, Ben. Unfortunately, that is not in General's Handbook 2020. Unfortunately, not but, anymore, yeah. But, but there, there was certainly a big change, both positive mm. and negatively, in the new book. So I'm glad we held out. Mm. For sure. Um, other than the coach Discord, um, oh, I would, I'd love to shout out uh, Slaughter Hammer and CanCon. I've gone to those for years, and they're fantastic fun. I always like going. And last year, or this year for CanCon, I took a very Wildwood Ranger heavy list. I did absolutely awful, but I had a fantastic time. <laughs> so CanCon, for me, it's just always about the fun and always about the narrative, which is fantastic. I mean, last year, I also went to... Again, shouting out coach. I went to Sydney, uh, <laughs> Sydney G GT. Um, I took my Draco line list and that was absolutely fun to do. And I went four and two, which I'd never done before. So that was fantastic fun. Um, and well, I am a little bias on Draco line, but you know, <laughs> you are, you are, you are a man of the kitty cats. Um, but Jonathan, this has been awesome. I've really mm. enjoyed this chat. I hope people who have listened to this have enjoyed it because again, I think we've had an interesting chat around grey water and um, mm. I would love to hear how people are building their list if mm. they're building grey water that includes um, includes elves, if people are re running a human build of grey water like I have. Hell, people are bringing in Stormcast Ballistas and what, what does a Stormcast mm. Ballista list look like within mm. um, within grey water? So, again, mm. I'd love to hear what people's lists are looking like and seeing some examples. Mm. Jonathan, let's bring this home. Thank you again for, for your sure. time. I really enjoyed this. Um mm. Guys, thanks very much. See you guys. Stay cool. Play fun. Stay cool. G'day. I hope you enjoyed that video and you're left with some new ideas. One of the biggest ways you can contribute to AOS Coach is by liking the video you've just watched and leaving a comment in the comment section. This lets YouTube know this is a good video and it should recommend it to other hobbyists. If you'd also like to support the channel even further like these bloody legends, go check out AOS Coach on Patreon. Otherwise, don't forget your triumph.